Okay, well, hello everyone. Um, welcome to the workshop. So uh, we've got quite an interactive workshop for you today um, and we're really excited to um, go through the exercise with you and meet you and um, share with you some file format fun. Um, we personally think that learning about file formats um, is really exciting. So hopefully you will too. Um, so for a bit of background, my name is Francesca. I work at the National Archives as a digital archivist uh, alongside Andre and Andrea. And um, I, I do sort of digital archivist activities um, in terms of ingesting collections, but I also do a lot of file format research um, and work a lot with Pronom. Um, I'll pass you over to Andre to introduce himself as well. Hi everyone, I'm excited for you to join us. I'm excited to be here as well. Um, I'm Andre and I work at the National Archives alongside Francesca and Andrea. Um, I've been here now for um, just over a year and a half and I am a file format analyst. So the majority of the time um, I am working, I spend um, my time um, adding to um, Pronom, the digital, um, uh, the sorry, the file format repository uh, that we have, and um, either adding new file formats or uh, amending or changing the existing signatures um, with a goal of improving file format identification. And I'll pass over to Andrea. Hi everyone, um, my name is Andrea and just like Andre, I am a file format analyst at the National Archives. Um, so, um, as Andre said, we we'll work on uh, researching file formats, which we hopefully will teach you today. Um, my background is originally in art, so I graduated in history of art, and then I transferred over to work with uh, physical records. And from that, I, during the COVID-19 pandemic, as everything went digital, I developed more digital skills and uh, found uh, interest in digital archiving. So. Um, so I've been working at National Archives for about over just over a year and a half. Um, yeah, we hope you enjoy the workshop today and uh, find out how fun it can be researching file format and looking at the structures. Um, and I am, I think I'm going to hand over to Francesca, but we might want to do something, um, ask everyone else where they're coming from, where they're joining us. So. Uh, if you maybe could say hello and uh, put in the chat where you are coming from, um, where you are joining us from, but uh, we'll hand over to Francesca now. Just realise as well that I kept my introduction fairly brief. Um, I should say previously, this is my second digital archiving job. Previously, I worked at the Parliamentary Archives, um, so I have a little bit um, of background in um, using a digital preservation system. I've also done a little bit of web archiving as well, and uh, my degree was in electronic engineering. Um, yeah, just to add to everything that I mentioned. And Francesca, over to you. Brilliant. Um, yeah, I think the very exciting thing about our team and also our wider team as well, because we're not the only um, people that do work with Pronom, is that um, it doesn't actually really matter your background to do file format research. So Andre's background is electric, electrical engineering, Andrea's history of art, and I studied English literature. So um, despite everyone thinking that our role is very technical, you can really have any background to do this work, which I think is great. So um, it's possibly preaching to the choir slightly, but I wanted to start with a brief exercise um, and talk a bit, a bit about why we do digital preservation to start with. Um, so this is our agenda for today. So we'll talk a bit about that. Then we'll move on to Pronom, what it is and file formats. And then we'll get you to actually do some work too um finding your first file format signature um and looking at different file formats and then we've got a quiz for you as well um so it should be really fun um go to the next slide um so we have a menti um which hopefully you're prepared for the existence of because we mentioned it in an email i think got sent round. um but you can scan the QR code or enter this code at menti.com. And um, we thought we'd start with a question about what sort of digital memory you treasure the most. So it could be photographs from a holiday or possibly um, a music collection or something like that. Um, and I will share the Menti screen in a minute.
if everyone can see that. Perfect. Let's see what sort of answers we get. Can everyone find the um, the menti? Okay. So I've just noticed there's the URL that's in the chat. And the code is across the top. Ooh, online diaries. I love the Crayola app on Windows. That's, I think, the most unique answer I've seen so far. all these answers excellent uh, no, i've actually well. played the oregon trail it's it's a great game <laughs> all neopets home videos and family photos baby videos so um yes yeah, so, like, um, photographs and video content definitely is something that um is very important so i think what we really wanted to demonstrate here is that there's definitely been a shift so I think quite often when people think of archives they think of all the beautiful old things you get on paper records and they think of sort of personal diaries but very much in physical form but I think we're slowly shifting even more to an age where there's evidence here as well with the sort of old games and the things you're beginning to get very meaningful digital objects that affect you personally um just within your personal memory um not even just in the wider co archival context um and i just think it's a great way of showing sort of just how important these objects are becoming now um to so thank you very much for sharing um, all of those with us. I'll let Andrea share her screen again. Maybe I have to unshare. Yeah, an excellent range of uh, responses there. Lots of interactive content, music, audio files, videos. Um, great so, um, yeah, it's, it's one of the things that makes digital preservation, I think, so meaningful. Um, so, for example, um, and one of the reasons why I think uh, why we feel like some of the file format work is the really important step into digital preservation because if you don't quite know what your file format is you can't go around preserving it um, or taking steps in that preservation um, so for example if you didn't understand that it was a microsoft word document from the 2000s you wouldn't be able to know the correct way of migrating it and looking at, into what your file format is is almost the first step to becoming to even beginning a digital preservation workflow. Um, and we've just done a couple of examples of quite how technology is moving on um, so speedily. We've got the huge Colossus there, you've got the bigger computer there, but you wouldn't be able to really, without specialist software today um, and equipment, get anything off either of those computers, um, which is why digital preservation is a very fast moving field and important. Um, we also have, um, if I go on to the next slide. Um, so we've also got a bit more of a fun one, a less serious one for you today. It's a bit of an icebreaker. Um, so I absolutely love um, this image. It was done by Sarah Middleton, who works at DPC. And on Twitter, she asked everyone, what sort of file format would they be and why? Um, and they had some great answers. Um, so I think, CSV, I'm open, simple, and pretty darn useful. Um, or 
a doc. I was best around 1997, but I'm still pretty amazingly ubiquitous. Um, so we thought as just a little bit of a fun icebreaker, um, we'd ask you this question um, and then uh, I'll move on in the Menti. So feel free to answer that, but we'll share the responses slightly later on. So you have a bit of time to think about it while the presentation continues. Um, and I'll now hand over to Andrea, who will talk about Pronom. Thank you, Francesca. So um, about going to the next slide, we've prepared a little video for you to um, to introduce Pronom. Uh, so I will just start with that and uh, let me know if there's any issues with um, hearing the video. Um, I actually, sorry, I've realized I might have to reshare just for that a moment. Um, but um, yeah, we'll do that quickly. Uh, apologies for that. I might need uh, Francesca to uh, share the screen again because um, it's not giving me the options on Zoom to share um, or to end my sharing. Oh, thank you. Um, so if I then go to share my screen. Apologies for that. Okay, so hopefully now you'll be able to enjoy the uh, video. Pronom is a file format registry, essentially a database where we enter information about various file formats. It contains information about files you use every day, for example, JPEG, CSV, or Word documents. You may be wondering why that is helpful, but do you know how to get your files off this anymore? Or this? Or this? In order to preserve your records, you first have to know what they are. Could you effectively preserve Magna Carta, Doomsday Book, or Shakespeare's Will without knowing what materials it was made out of? As Hartley said, the past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. Well, Pronom is here to help with the translation. The concept for Pronom was formulated around 20 years ago with a decision to build a knowledge base to help us understand digital preservation risks. It was made publicly available in 2005. Pronom is now used all over the world in the fields of digital preservation, information management, and digital forensics. An entry for a file format in Pronom could contain information such as description, version number, and file classification. However, its main role is to store signatures. Signatures here are similar to a human signature, created with the purpose of identification. These can be made by storing the file format extension, such as CSV, but also can involve analyzing the file by opening it and finding the recurring patterns. The patterns are described in a notation called X and allow us to identify the files more accurately. Other software, such as Droid or Siegfried, use this information when scanning files so you can identify what is stored on your computer. Pronom receives the research time and effort of practitioners from all around the world and to date has collaborated with over 80 institutions. New file formats and suggestions for improvement come from our pool of users, records of the National Archives and any new major releases of popular file formats. The Pronom team checks submissions, conducts file format research and maintains the database. 
while it may be supported by the National Archives. We are proud to say it is run by a community. If you want to give file format research a go, then just send us a message. Because bits don't bite. Right, so um, that was the video just to introduce Pronom, and uh, we will um, talk about more of those things uh, in this workshop uh, before we move on to uh, exercises. Um, but yeah, just to introduce Pronom, as you've heard in the video, um, it's um, it was made over 20 years ago because we realised there was a need uh, for, um, for knowing it more information about file formats and as Francesca mentioned uh, how uh, as technology changes you need to know about though you need to be able to uh, note those changes down and to be able to plan for um, how to best uh, archive your objects in the future so really that's what um, Pronom is part of um, it stores sign file format signatures uh, and and then feeds on the information of the file format signatures to software identification tools such as Droid uh, or Siegfried or Fido. I'm not sure. Um, ho I hope uh, some of you may have used some of uh, some of them. Please let us know in the chat um, if you do use any of them um, and if you're familiar with them. Um, so yeah. So then uh, when we uh, so Pronom holds that information. So then if we scan our files through those file format identification uh, tools. We will then be able to know uh, that's the exact uh, file format and uh, which we are working with and which we have in our collection, and then archive our documents, um, in um, in the way of uh, best archive them in the, in in the format that um, is best for the uh, for the, for our records and um, that's not in any uh, that's not associated with any risks. Um, so uh, in a similar way, um, signatures that are stored in Pronom are sort of like uh, watermarks for um, for old paper records. So if you can think back to um, to paper a uh, paper paper when it was made, and um, it would have a, a certain watermarks to kind of um, to say where it was from uh, would. Uh, say the person who made it or uh, what age it was made at, uh, ma what age it was made in. So um, sort of uh, file format signatures are similar in that way. Um, and they help us to kind of know uh, what is in our collection, similarly as uh, the watermarks would help the conserver to know how to repair the paper or parchment. Um, so uh, that was an uh, introduction to Pronom, and I will now pass on to Andre to talk a bit more about why we need uh, the signatures, um, specifically file format signatures, and why we can't just identify a file formats with extensions. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that, uh, Andrea. Um, yeah, so I think um, it's it's useful to mention that um, file formats are not quite what they may appear to be at first glance. Um, and I think the first um, interaction with the notion of file formats will be um, the extensions that are visible uh, next to the files in various operating systems, Windows, Linux, uh, Mac OS. Um, so I think we're... Um, we're uh, oh sorry and a bit of an icebreaker as well and we're talking about a, an extension we're not talking um the additional part of your home that you might be renovating during the pandemic uh, we mean those uh, typically a three letter um uh alphanumerical thing that precedes the file uh, title um after um sorry that follows on after the the full stop um so typical extensions that We've already mentioned CSV, doc, docx, um, XLSC, et cetera. Um, and um, on closer inspection, um, it, it's quite clear that this is not a reliable way of identifying file formats. So you can see in the image there at the bottom of the slide, um, we have a file that we've created, an empty um, text file, TXT file. Um, and then um, we've uh, right clicked on that file in Windows and we've decided to rename it. Um, and while renaming it, we have changed the extension from TXT to um, a bunch of um, you know, um, random characters that you can see after the full stop. Um, so um, treating, it, treating it in this way and looking at it just like that, it's not immediately obvious what the file is. 
The contents of the file have not changed in any way. However, that file is now not openable by a program in Windows. Um, and to someone who's looking at it, they might not understand what the contents of that file are. Um, so really, we need to look at much more reliable ways um, of understanding what the file contains. And um, that's hopefully what we'll um, show you today. And uh, now over to Francesca. I can have next slide, please. Brilliant. So I'm going to chat a bit about becoming your own file format detective. Um, and as you may have noticed um, in the next slide, um, we are really, really keen on referring back to physical records, which may seem a bit ironic. Um, but I am very strongly of the opinion that um, there are a lot of similarities between both fields um, and that both are very important sort of in terms of the overall archival theory, and there aren't too many differences. Um, so similarly to getting a seal on a letter or um, a sort of watermark, or even we've got here the roll um, showing private swan marks in the UK to differentiate them from the swans owned by the Queen of England. These are actual things we've got in our collection. Um, you also get signatures within file formats, believe it or not, that so this is specifically this type of file format. So um, if you look um, at the bottom of the screen, um, you see the PK, that's actually almost the signature or as we call it magic byte for a zip file. Um, and what we'll be doing later is looking for magic bytes ourselves. Can have the next slide, please. Um, so how do we do that? Well, I don't know if um, you've seen those movies where there's like a sort of um, computer disaster and then the coder goes to the computer and starts tapping away and all these zeros and ones appear and then they magically save the world um, but at the bottom or underneath all computers everything is binary um, but binary is really hard to read like um, and the person on the left hand side is you know speaking in binary but you, you couldn't really understand that um, each of those eight letter segments is making up like one letter um, and it's just inefficient. So um, what you have is different forms of notation that the computer decodes, it, which is what we'll be using today. Um, and that translates each of those sort of eight binary zeros and ones into a character like 49 or 20. Um, and those will then again um, translate into um, ASCII or UTF-8, which is what you read on a typical computer in a text file or something. Um, and it will do the translation for you and then you'll try and find pairs of hex that have that sort of signature or a similar signature across different files. Um, and it's kind of almost like a different language, except you can't call it that, you've got to call it a notation. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Um, oh, yeah, I see the audio is choppy. Is that for everyone? I can try and speak a bit clearer. Or is it? Is the sound okay? For everyone else? Sort of um, breaks up sometimes, but um, yeah, I'm not sure it might be um, something with the connection but I think it's um it then gets we can hear you fine right now we can hear you okay yeah. okay I'll I'll try and speak a bit slower as well um so um and if there's anything anyone wants me to go back over or that I just said too fast now um I'm happy to do that as well um just let me know because I've got my eye on the chat um so um I just this is a comparison so this is Andrea's dog um, and we have put this picture of Andrea's dog into a hex editor um, and this is what it comes out with so the way the computer is showing you the file is very different from what happens in the hex editor um, and if I can have the next slide please um, and I just wanted to do this quick comparison as well so on the left hand side you've got how humans read files um, and again, we're relating it back to um, digital, um, di relating digital preservation to um, physical records. Um, so if you look at a letter as a human, 
um, we have been taught from a young age exactly how the structure is supposed to be. Um, so at the top, we know that's the person who the letter is to. At the bottom, you know who the letter's from. Um, you've got the main message in the middle. Um, at the top on the left, you know that that's very likely to be a page number. Now there's no nothing telling you within the letter specifically that that is how the structure goes, but that is something that you have been taught from a young age to understand. Well, it's it's very similar to computers. So um, each sort of file format um, is almost is to sort of structure have um, what this picture um, and at the very start of the file, the computer knows that's where the magic bytes are um, for a PNG file and how to handle it. Um, here in the box sort of towards the right, that's actually uh, the width and height the image is supposed to be, um, and each individual color is which. Um, and each file is a sort of way of so storing information or a structure of storing information that allows the software, therefore, to render it into a picture of a pig, which you therefore see. Um, and it's quite a nice comparison because actually we do very similar things when we read letters and um, I'm hoping it makes it slightly more relatable rather than lots of scary numbers. Can I have the next slide please? Um, yes. Ah, okay, sorry. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming there's still a few connection issues. Um, so, uh, and then just finally, um, I'll pass on to Andre in a minute, but um, this is just the start um, in hex. And this is what the signature looks like in pronom. So it's just copied straight from the hex into the value. But I'll pass over to Andre now, because I think he was going to speak next. Um, and then maybe he can also talk to this slide if I if it's not sounded great for everyone sorry it's okay it's been a little bit choppy but i think uh i think that was that was clear there at the end um so yeah if uh, we'll go to the next slide andrea so as francesca has already mentioned um this there, there is um it's important to kind of understand that um, and link digital files to to physical files um and i think it's a useful analogy um to have so um when it comes to file formats, um, we'll look for signatures. We'll look for um, a string, usually, of um, characters that are written in this hexadecimal notation, or just hex. Um, and they can sometimes come at the beginning of the file, they can come at the end of the file, or they can be found somewhere in between. Um, so over here, um, we've got the slide. This slide is titled Magic Bytes. So we use these two terms interchangeably, Magic Bytes or um, signatures, file format signatures. Essentially, we're referring to the same thing. So if you, if you were to look at the um, left of the table over there, um, you have um, a number of characters that, that in, hex, in hex that reads 52, 49, 46, 46. Um, and then in the column second to the left, um, that then translates to um, legible text um, in ASCII as RIFF um, or RIF container. Um, and then you have um, a gap of four characters, which we denote with those question marks, um, which then is followed by 5741, 5645, which is legible as WAVE. Um, and if we were to detect uh, that in what we call the bitstream of the file or the way that the file looks when you open it up using a hexadecimal editor or a hex editor, um, that is what we want to see if we want to identify that file as a WAV or a waveform audio file format. And um, you can see also some other examples over here. So MP3, someone mentioned LimeWire MP3s that really took me back to uh, my teenage days. Um, BMP files, so we'll be covering um, image files today, so that's that's very relevant at um, the fifth one down. Um, and then also some um, CD or DVD image files, very applicable to those who are uh, ripping CDs or DVDs for um, their digital preservation collections. Um, and finally, also someone mentioned games too, so um, 
Nintendo Game and Watch and Image File. So just an example of a probably a less commonly found um, file there too. But irrespective of what file format it is, um, there is always a, a signature that we look for. So some of them can be long or more complex, such as the first couple there um, at the top. Um, and some of them can be very, very simple, such as uh, BM for the BMP file. And um, yeah, you can also um, have a look at more examples on that Wikipedia article list of uh, file signatures. And if we could go to the next slide, please, Andrea. So um, just now I mentioned that you are um, able to look at the file in the way that it, it, the computer reads it or the way that it appears on the computer. And in order to do that, we need the tools of the trade. And in our instance, these tools of the trade are hex editors. Um, now, I think in the uh, prior to the workshop, um, there should have been a message to say that um, ideally that everyone hopefully has had access to um, a program called HXD. Uh, HXD is a type of hex editor, uh, but there are also other um, hex editors available online um, or other standalone programs for um, various operating systems. Uh, but that is the one that we'll be looking at today. Um, so please do let, let us know if you're um, able to find it and to download it or install it. And if that hasn't been the case, I think we'll also provide an alternative um, for an online one. But if anyone is struggling to find one, just let us know in the comments and um, we'll make sure that we'll point you to one that you can use. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll look into it. We've already seen a little bit of it on the in previous slides, but this slide over here shows what a file, a particular file actually looks when it is opened within a hex editor. So the way that we read this is right from the very top, from the top left corner, we go um, along, along the first, um, row and then we start with the second row and, and so so on and so forth until we reach the end of the file. So on the left hand side you'll notice um, you'll see something that's called offset. So offset is just telling you how far along the file you are in relation to the beginning of the file. Um, and um, you'll notice that the way that the file is described is in hexadecimal pairs. So each one of these pairs corresponds to a particular character. So in the instance of, um, I think that's zero, zero, maybe that's D zero, that would correspond to um, on the left to the first character that we can see on the right, which looks sort of like a Latin capital D over there. And then the CF that we see that immediately follows on the left-hand side corresponds to what looks like a um, capital Latin I. Um, and so on and so forth. So it's a very helpful way of looking at a file and seeing what it's what it looks like in hexadecimal notation, which is useful for when we come to write the signatures, um, because that's the way that they have to be presented to a computer, but also seeing the way that those hexadecimal pairs um, are then um, how they correspond to quite often legible human text. Um, in UTF-8 um, or um, ASCII um, or similar. Um, and yeah, I think we can go to the next slide. So um, hopefully everyone's ready for their first interactive activity. We, as we said, we'd, we'd like to keep it fairly interactive today. So um, first of all, um, what we will do in a minute is we'll stop sharing the presentation and um, you can see that at the bottom of the slide there, there is a link to the um, materials that you need for the first part of this workshop. So we'll be, depending on timing, we'll definitely try to do two. Maybe we'll try to, maybe if we have time, we'll do three different file formats. Um, and uh, in order to access the materials for all of them, um, what you need to do is follow um, the link below. Um, so We'll just keep that up there for maybe another 30 seconds or so, Andrea, just to give everyone the opportunity. Um, yeah, we can do that for sure. I can type it in just to make it easier. Uh, just bear with me one moment. And if anyone is not able to access it, then please do just let us know. Brilliant. Thank you, Amanda, for that. Appreciate it. Um, and once, Andrea, stop sharing. I will just do a bit of a screen share myself and I'll open up HXD um, and share whilst I'm opening up the, uh, the program. And 
open up a few files in the program and just give you a few more pointers just to uh, steer you um, towards finding your first file format signature. Um, okay, so if I just go ahead and share my screen, um, just bear with me a moment. Um, so I think, okay, brilliant, there we go. Oh, just bear with me one moment. If I share this screen, sorry, multiple screen setup. Um, I'll just go ahead and do the screen over here. Um, and can everyone see me opening up HXD just there? Andrea, all okay? Brilliant. So I've just gone ahead and opened the program, um, the Hecus editor, and also um, hopefully everyone has had a chance to download the materials um, that are within this first folder, which is entitled um, FMT 1778 Dynamic Publisher Screen Files. So that's level one that we'll be looking at today. And um, Andre, if you could just let me know if anyone's saying anything in the chat, because um, that's currently hidden from view for me. But um, hopefully everyone can follow along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these 10 files over here and simply drag and drop them into HXD, like so. And the screen, uh, the font size that you might see on your screen is a little bit smaller. I've just made it slightly bigger so that everyone hopefully is able to find the text legible over here. Andrea, how does that look? Okay. It looks yeah, good. it's good to me. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Um, so um, as I mentioned earlier, there are typically, there are a few places, there are three categories that we um, assign to signatures. Either they're found at the beginning of the file, at the end of the file, or somewhere along in the middle. Um, so I would just um, like everyone to take a moment to um, flick between these different files over here and just have a look, maybe start at the top, at the beginning and at the end, and see if there is something there that you can spot that is similar. So the similarity can be either in terms of the hex that you can see on the left hand side of the screen over here, or in terms of the character, the decoded text that you can see on the right side of the screen. Um, and we're looking for either sequence. Um, so yeah, I think I'll um, leave everyone with that. If there are any questions at all, if anything is not clear or um, the materials aren't downloading or you're not able to use a hex editor, then please just let us know and we'll do our best to try to help. Please feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions as well. Um, so yeah, we are here to help. So uh, we want, yeah, as Andre mentioned, we are looking for uh, the sort of unique bytes um, in the um, in the format. The, and yeah, unique a unique sequence that's that's present in every um, file that you can see in HXD um, that is common to all of those files. And as I said, um, the, the clue is to start either at the beginning or at the end. And we'll just give you a little bit of time for that. Yeah, as Laura, uh, Laura mentioned, uh, just, um, yeah, we'll give you plenty of time to download the files as well. So um, uh, maybe we'll uh, do uh, another, like, another five to seven minutes, uh, but, um, uh, if once you're done with um, knowing what the signature is, please feel free to um, say done. Uh, but don't don't say what it is to not spoil it for everyone. Um, feel feel free to post done in the chat. Um, but we will go through it together in the end. Um,
Hi, can I ask a question? Uh, yes, of course, go ahead. Um, Absolutely. Could I ask, so those numbers, do these numbers exactly like 44, is that always gonna be a D, for example? Yes. Yes. And it will also be a capital D. Okay, all right, thank you. That makes sense. Oh, good to know. Um, yeah, there's Great actually, I'm gonna, I'll try and find it now, but there's actually a whole uh, dictionary of hex uh, translated to ASCII, so uh, we can put that in the chat. Um, we can just, um, oh yeah, Andres, just uh, searching for that. Um, so yeah, this is, you can basically just um, put any, um, yeah, so this is like a table where you can find any characters, uh, what are they in ASCII and then what are they in um, HEX as well. Um, so yeah, 44 is a D, a capital D. Yep, so you can see 44 is a capital D, uh, 4D is an M, and that always stays consistent. Um, so if we were to refer back to the ASCII table over here, um, the same goes for any other characters too. So um, we can see over here a copyright symbol, that's an A9. Um, it's just a standardized way for us to be able to decipher this hexadecimal notation, which is related to binary, um, what's understood by a computer, um, to um, the character that it represents. It actually um, gets a bit weird in our office because um, what Andre's not showed you is if you go into HXD um, and start a new um, a new tab, um, you can actually write things in the decoder text like happy birthday and then we'll send each other birthday cards in hex. Um, so if you ever want to send confusing messages or do a treasure hunt for anyone, um, yeah. <laughs> then uh, you can do things like that, which is, we think is quite fun. You might not. So how is everyone getting on? Uh, does anyone need any help uh, with the signature um, are people? Uh, finished with their research or do you need more time? Please let us know, either unmute yourself or at us in the chat. I could ask another question. So when you um, open that new tab and you're typing in that link, like those words, if you type in, can you type in the signature and create a file in the hex editor? Absolutely. It's an excellent, excellent uh, question. Yes, you can. And um, Sort of jumping the gun here a little bit, but um, what you can do is you can effectively create a file in a hex editor. Um, and so long as it for, it has those magic bytes that we're looking for for a particular file, if you then put it into a file format identification tool such as Droid, that's already been mentioned in, um, today or in the chat as well, or Siegfried, if the signature is in the right place, it the file will be identified as such. So. Um, what we try to do with Pronom is um, essentially it's a first stop for file format identification. Um, it's a very good indicator of what a, that file is likely to be, but it, it is not a definitive guide to whether that file conforms to what we refer to as a specification or um, the sort of everything that that file must have in order to truly be the file that it claims to be. So you can kind of create these um, fake files, if you, um, for want of a better term, um, that technically look like a like a the right file format, but really, if you were to open them, for instance, a PDF or a docx file, they would not render um, by the application that they they that they are opened with. Um, so yeah, that's an excellent question. Thank you for raising it. I was, was going to say as well um, on that, if you found the specification for the file format that said here we would expect to see the width, here we would expect to see this, um, and you know it would take you quite a long time, but you would 
probably be able to create a basic image that would then open a JPEG um, or something like that. Um, and there's also people that sometimes, um, and this is really jumping the gun, um, for fun, they'll um, go into hex editors and they will um, make files that can open in as a music um, file and they can also open as a JPEG file if they're clever enough about where they put all the bytes exactly. Um, it's almost like a sort of file format artwork. We have another excellent question from Lara there. Um, what about non-ASCII characters? Yes, I think that's a really important point. So um, as you'll notice uh, when you look at a file in a hex editor, so um, some of the characters are translated into ASCII, but some of the other ones um, are not, or they, they might appear to be um, full stops, for instance, but you, you'll notice that these um, full stops or periods for our North American colleagues, um, this one over here is zero, zero, but this one is over here is zero F. So it's not always what you see on the right hand side in the coded text. It's a good indication as to what that character is. But for the definitive way of knowing what that is, it's useful to consult um, the table, the, uh, this, this, this table that kind of um, we've uh, shown you here. I'm just going to post it in the chat. Oh, no, it's already there. Thank you, Andrea. Um, so, for instance, if we were to expand the definition, so, um, for instance, zero, 01, if uh, we were to put that into hex, so we can copy that and we can go into HXD and we can just delete this text, sorry, Francesca, but we can put in um, on this side over here, zero, 01, and that will render as just, you know, a point essentially. And we can do the same um, with um, another one of these characters over here, zero nine. Let's take that, for example, and we can put that over here. And again, you can see that the decoded text doesn't give you the full information of what that character is, but that's okay um, because um, sometimes, um, as we'll see, the signatures uh, will be comprised of um, the hex characters, which translate to human readable text or ASCII, um, but that we, that's not necessary for file format identification. We just need a consistent pattern over here on the left-hand side. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really good point to raise. And um, I think a little bit about the history of those characters. I think they have come around um, uh, their sort of legacy, um, things like acknowledge um, and you know um, inquiry and the end of transmission. I think they may have come around from um, possibly even sort of predating maybe early computing or typewriters or things like that. So um, that's just the way um, that um, they have kind of remained consistent um, over time. Um, but yeah, also a good um, thing to look up, for instance, is space characters. Um, so if we were to search that, um, white space characters, the Wikipedia article. So what you'll be able to see here is the most common that you will see is um, two zero, um, if I just go over here, but there's all sorts of white space characters that you might get. Um, I think uh, Francesca's favorite is the Mongolian vowel separator. Um, it's a space, but a very particular type of space. Um, so um, the what you see just again on the right-hand side of the screen is a good guide, but it doesn't necessarily translate the hex character well. Um, it's just to, in order to get a, a quick idea of um, whether there's any human readable text within the document. So, um, and then, shall, we, uh, oh, sorry. Whether, shall we go through the answers of everyone or? Um... Yeah, just, just another quick one. Yeah, yeah, another quick question I noticed from Laura. Excellent question. Are the hex codes for say Chinese characters or Korean Hangul? Yes, absolutely they are. Um, it's just a different way of decoding them. So um, if we were to, go over here and say like so. Helpful article here from the Library of Congress from our colleagues. And again, what we see is um, various Hangul characters um, and then their representation are in hex on the left-hand side as well. So 
Um, yeah, absolutely. And the same is true for Arabic script as well and um, other alphabets too. Great point. I was, I was going to say, if people feel like they're close to being done, um, we actually have a mentee. So you could go into there and vote on what you think the um, magic bites are for this signature. Um, <clears throat> if you've still got the link to the mentee. I think we can post it. In the chat, in the, just in case yeah. as well, uh, the yeah. code. Absolutely. So the code is consistent for Menti throughout the entire presentation. Um, so to take it back to the exercise, how is everyone finding looking at the files? Has everyone been able to open up the files okay in, in HXD? Is everyone getting an inkling what the answer might be? Um, just, I should have no, sort of mentioned at the beginning, it's not, a, it's not a trick one, this one. It should be, we started off with a fairly simple example to ease everyone into it. Um, um, so hopefully everyone's found it okay, but do let us know if, if, um, if you're stuck or anything is not clear. Or if you would like a bit more time. So we have 12 responses, so I don't know if um, it would be worth sharing the mentee. I will share the mentee. Yeah, perfect, thank you. So it seems like everyone's gone for uh, the dynamic publisher screen. Um, feel free to add in more votes uh, now if you wish. Um, so I think I think the important thing to note here is uh, it's very very easy um, to um, guess between either the first option or the second. But um, um, as you will see when you have a little bit more time to look at hex tables, is um, the capitalization is important because the um, the characters um, the letters might be the same, um, but um, the the way that those letters are then translated in hex is is different and. Um, uh, that will matter when it comes to creating those signatures because the, um, the in this particular example the um, the the signature has been put in there quite del deliberately by the creator. So hopefully you would have been able to see in HXD right at the beginning of the file from left to right the sequence and then dynamic publisher screen um, all in capitals. Um, and I'm glad people are appreciating the. Uh, the um, odd one out there in the middle too. Um, so well done to everyone who spotted the dynamic publisher screen in capitals because uh, you are all correct. Um, and uh, if anyone has any questions regarding this, uh, please feel free to unmute, unmute yourself or put your questions in the chat uh, before we move on. But if there are no questions, we will move on to our next exercise. Um, okay, so not seeing any questions. Um, I'm going to share my screen now and we'll uh, move on to another exercise. Okay, so um, that's level one complete. Uh, and uh, you can view uh, the images. Uh, if you are interested, uh, those images that you have as sample files uh, can be viewed uh, using the QR code there. Um, so 
uh, you've got the QR link there and you can um, view those. I will copy and paste that link for you as well. Um, if you're interested, uh, you can uh, drag and drop uh, files to that uh, link and um, view that. Um, Yep, so the image that you can see there in the middle of the, of the screen is actually a part of the um, files that you've been looking at. So um, um, I always find it, find it really rewarding, uh, as much fun as um, file format uh, research is and looking at hex editors to, if it's at all possible, to try to render these images. So by following that link, you'll be able to um, drag and drop um, files um, uh, into the online image viewer and and see them. Um, actually, if I just go ahead and screen share, um, Andre, just for a moment, that would be useful. Yeah, I think you can screen share just um, without me pausing it as well. So I think okay. you should be able to do that. But let me know if there is any issues. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I will just do it like so. And just let me know if everyone can see that OK. Yeah, can see that. Yep. Um, okay, brilliant. So if we were to go to um, this, which is hopefully what you're able to see, um, if I just um, hide floating these materials, okay. If um, I were to take those same files or one of the files that we just dragged into HXD and move it into the screen over here, where it says choose files. There we are. That's one of the images that we were looking at. Um, and for context, I think this particular file format is from the late 1980s to the early 90s, um, one of the sort of older heritage um, image formats um, that come in sort of from the pre-PC uh, commercialization era. So I think it's Atari ST um, that this one is associated with. and um, just to drag another one over here, like so. Um, so yeah, so that's dynamic publisher screen files. And Andre, if you'd like to share the presentation again. Yeah, so uh, again, well done to everyone who uh, found the right uh, file format signature. Um, you are one step ahead of becoming a full file format detective. Um, and uh, since we have been talking to you for quite a while and you've already done a completed one of your exercises, we will uh, now take a five minute break. Um, so feel free to uh, grab a, a coffee or a drink and we will be back in five minutes. So um, if uh, Andre can uh, tell, put the time in the chat when we are meant to be back, because I can't see the time at the moment uh, because I'm sharing. Um, so yeah, we will be back in five minutes uh, after which we will uh, complete another exercise. Um, hopefully. Okay. Um, please let us know um, if you're back in the chat uh, by uh, clicking the thumbs up emoji. Great, thank you. Excellent. Um, so we will uh, move on to our next exercise now, uh, which is again in your um, in the Google Drive that you that we shared with you at the beginning. Um, there are there's a folder called Level Two. So in our next exercise, we will be exploring GIFs. And um, if you can please uh, download the files in that folder, uh, and we will be looking at the GIFs uh, sample, GIF sample files. Uh, so we'll give you uh, maybe one or two minutes just to download those uh, files. And um, then I will go through the GIFs with you. Uh, but 
uh, just to mention as well, um, we will be looking at uh, specifications in this uh, particular um, example. So um, in that level two folder, there is also a text file with a link which has uh, the, the specification. But if you are unable to access that link, um, there is also this QR code uh, for, uh, for the specification. Um, Andrew just shared the workshop uh, materials uh, code for uh, the Google Drive. Uh, but yeah, on the screen here, uh, the QR code has uh, the link, direct link to the specification that we'll be looking at. And that will be a little guide for uh, the GIFs and GIF file format research. So um, with the specifications, we are not uh, always, oh, thank you, Hilary, for sharing that. Um, so yeah, with uh, file formats, we are not always super lucky to have uh, specifications. Um, some file formats have got specification, which um, describes exactly what the, file, what the structure of the file format should be. Uh, so, for example, here with GIFs, we have a file format a specification that um, if you click on that link and make sure you scroll down, um, I will just uh, share another screen to show you exactly what I mean. Um, so, stop sharing that. And share the screen. Okay, so... Um, if you can see um, in this specification, if you go onto this link, you can then scroll down and there is also a table of contents uh, which uh, where you can find information about what a file format is and exactly describe its structure, which from which we detect what the magic bytes are. Uh, which we will be looking for so um, I will give you a hint and, for example we can go straight away to the um, to the chapter seven, uh, since that's titled as a header. And header basically represents uh, what we were talking about, uh, the beginning of our format um, signatures. So in the header, you will be able to distinguish exactly uh, what that what the signature for the file format is. So if we go straight away to chapter seven, um, so scrolled a bit too far and we go to oh actually I'll just actually probably easiest way is to just press control and find and type in header um okay so here we are and um, yeah you have to scroll uh down quite further quite further down but yeah I recommend just pressing control f and then typing in header into your browser. And yeah, so here, if we go into the header, you can study the uh, specification yourself. And this is sort of a hint and help to tell you what the signature is that we are looking for. Um, so in this, in here specifically, it will, um, it will tell you that, um, what the signature should be. And it is it, it should be pretty obvious, hopefully. But uh, do let us know if you have um, any issues. Um, so again, what we uh, will be doing is, uh, as we did in the first exercise uh, with Andre, we are looking at um, GIF a file format, and we will we will need to upload the sample files into our hex editor. So um, as uh, similarly as before, if you just uh, have the files ready. And you can just uh, drag and drop them into the hex editor, um, as I have done. Um, and here, then you can go and uh, go ahead and study the file format. So um, the file format, sorry. And uh, what um, a good tip I would say is to just have them all open and basically just go through them. And as you can see, there are certain things that change in uh, the those file formats, but certain things which don't. So that is a good way of looking at uh, the, um, the samples because that straight away should be pretty obvious what the actual signature is. So the what is the un what is so unique about all those samples that you have? Um, what by what can we distinguish this file format to be? Um, yeah, I and mean, if you go through them, 
you can see that uh, some things change and some things stay the same. So what is the unique thing that stays the same? Um, yeah, and so we can give you maybe five to seven minutes again. Um, and um, yeah, please, please let us know when you are done in the chat or please tell us if you've got any questions, if you've got any questions about specifications, if you've got any questions about um, the samples or what you're looking for. Um, I know it's a lot of information, but uh, we weren't um, trying to confuse you with the specification, I promise. We kind of uh, gave, gave that in as uh, another help. So uh, please, please tell us know if anything is unclear. Um, just, like I said, just sorry, either unmute yourself or tell us in the chat. Just a little hint for this one as well is um, just bearing in mind what I said earlier. Um, the these consistent magic bytes of signatures can be found either at the beginning of the file, at the end of the file, or somewhere in the middle. Um, but I'd I'd recommend that you have a look at the beginning of the file and at the end of the file and see if there's that set of consistent characters that appear in each one of those 10 files. Um, so in the specification, uh, the first thing to look at would be the header. Um, and there's also another bit in the specification that tells you about something else. We'll just give you a couple of minutes just to process that. Um, and a really good question as well from Hillary there. What entity is creating file specifications? Um, this sort of varies. Um, usually it tends to be the file uh, format creator. Um, sometimes it's a consortium of different people. Um, but um, essentially it's someone who is either used to working with the files or someone who has created that particular format. Um, and as Andrea has mentioned, we don't always have the luxury of having these. Um, it's very, very useful to come across them because um, it gives us a degree of certainty um, that the um, what we're seeing is definitely consistent across all of the files. Um, otherwise, it could be the case that um, we could open up some files and we think um, that the signature that we have found or the magic bytes that we found are um, uh, definitely consistent, but also it could be just the, the sample size that we have leads us to think that that's what the signature is, whereas a specification definitively says this is what the file, every file that's a part of this file format has to have. But yeah. Can I ask a follow-up yeah. question to that? I'm just curious, because um, I've never personally really looked into um, specifications like this. Do you find that proprietary ones commonly have publicly available specifications? That is an excellent question as well. So uh, again, it's it's it tends to be the case that sometimes um, manufacturers or creators can be very cryptic. And um, I think in my own personal experience, that can be quite difficult when coming across proprietary audiovisual formats. Um, I think uh, there are a few ones by Canon and Sony that I've that I've seen before that. Um, where that information is just not publicly accessible. And sometimes um, it's not even specifications that you have to refer to. Sometimes it's forum posts. Um, another excellent resource um, that I think Andrea has mentioned that she uses quite a lot is the, um, the Wayback Machine, so part of the Internet Archive. Um, sometimes it's a case that some information may have previously been available on the web and it's now long gone, but thanks to... Um, that um, web archiving program, we're able to find it captured um, somewhere along the web from a long time ago. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the nature of, of, of the role. It's um, you're relying on your intuition, uh, experience, file format specifications, any information available on the internet, um, sample files. So something that we use quite a lot that we'll mention later is um, things like GitHub. Um, quite often that contains a lot of um, sample files that we can download and look at, because if we only have one or two examples of a file, it's it's much more difficult to say that we're sure that, you know, that part of the file is consistent across all files that relate to that file format. So for all of these examples, we've, we've given you 10 because we think 10 is a fairly reliable number. Um, 
but um yeah sometimes it requires a little bit of work but um yeah both both fab fabulous questions um and uh yeah it's our, our dream world would be one that's that's full of specifications everywhere and everything being well documented but um uh it's just something that's not had standardization um over all this time if we think to the history of kind of computing and early computers from um you know late 70s and um, then the commercialization of computers for home use anyone can create a file format um so um yeah um would love for everyone for everyone who does and it's not you know and, and if that file format is not part of pronom then then please contact us or if you come across one that you don't see um and you use that um you then store that format as a part of you know in a digital preservation system um it's really really important to to understand what it is because otherwise things like migration or emulation or just simply you know opening the file in the future um might prove very problematic um so we're here to help with that and to try to mitigate that risk of obsolescence so with um proprietary specifications quite often internally they will have a specification but because they've come up with a file format um that for example might have a better way of storing information and things um and that wouldn't necessarily include the magic bytes that's not very important but the specification will state that against um competitors um they'll keep it internally um but what we have done in the past is we've emailed the companies directly and said this is our proposed signature um without sharing the specification with us would this work um and explain a bit about what pronom is and what pronom does um and some organizations have been receptive to that in the past um, because you're not asking to leak details of their private sort of or or the better way of storing information you're simply asking for magic bytes the other thing i would say as well um is that sadly not all file formats have magic bytes um and if you ever do create your own file format please give it magic bytes i've actually got, got a couple of friends who told me they created some file formats recently and the first thing i asked was did you have add magic bytes and they didn't so it's very very common <laughs> it makes me quite sad so um yeah in case there are no um, magic bytes in the file format we will still look at what makes that file format unique and we would uh, go ahead and create a signature that um that maybe notes the exact structure of the file format so whatever makes it unique but um yeah uh, not all uh, file format signatures uh, are formed just of magic bytes which are um very much easier to find as francesca mentioned than um having to study the whole structure of a file format and we were going to look at a third example uh, possibly as well but i'm not sure we'll have time after this one um but um i will explain after what uh, the third example was as well so uh, i'm not sure how everyone is getting on with this uh format and the research if you could uh please let us know in the chat if you need any help um and if you're done as well but maybe we'll give it another minute and then uh, share another mentee slide so um that's again going to um reveal the answer for uh, what this um signature is
Okay, so um, maybe we'll uh, go ahead and look at the answer for this exercise. So if you uh, go uh, back to uh, the me your Mentimeter, um, we will, um, we've got a um, answers there. So if you could please put your answers in the Mentimeter, which um, I think you can do by scanning the link just um, here on this, uh, next to this GIF. So uh, just this one. We've got four answers. I'll wait till we've got a couple more and then I'll share. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, six, seven people have voted now for um, what uh, sequence are we looking at, at the end of the file. Sorry, apologies for that. I should have uh, said that as well, uh, that there was a end of the file sequence uh, for this one. Um, but yeah, if, uh, if anyone did spot that, thank you so much for that. But um, to just to go over what the specification said as well. Um, in the specification, you um, had, um, there was a text which said that the signature identifies the gift data stream. This uh, field um, contains the fixed signature uh, GIF in capital. Um, so well done for everyone who got that. Um, and yeah, it was F, um, the signature was 3B at the end as well. So well done to everyone who got that. Um, you've now uh, completed level two. So Andre just um, kindly put uh, the text from the specification. Uh, yes, I, will, I can just, uh, show that in the hex editor. Yes, I'll do that now. Um, if I stop sharing, uh, oh, sorry, if I start sharing my screen. Yeah, so here um, we're looking at the sample files. And so this, um, so, so that's the specification said, the signature at the beginning was GIF. And this specific one uh, actually had included uh, 89 within the signature as well. Um, and if you scroll all the way to the end, uh, you can see that the, at the end of the file format, uh, there is a 3B in hex. So that's in this one. And if we go to next one, go all the way to the end, um, it's free B here as well. So that has both beginning of the file signature and end of the file signature. And we would type that in as beginning of the file would be BOF um, and the signature. So uh, in ASCII, that would be GIF 89. And then uh, end of the file would be end of the file uh, in hex 3b. So yeah, congratulations on um, whoever spotted that. Um, and a and great question there as well. Sorry? Just another great question there by, by Shelley. Mm -hmm. If a file is missing the trailer, will it still be detected by Droid uh, or Siegfried? No, it won't. So um, in this instance, because the file specification tells us that the files must contain um, both um, the GIF and then 87A or 89A, depending on the version, 
at the beginning and but also the trailer um with the 3b right at the end of the file both are necessary conditions for that file to be identified as a gif so if it is missing it then it will not be identified is there any are there any more questions regarding this file format or um Is anyone, uh, was anyone able to find, was anyone thinking about a different signature? Um, please share um, if you were, and uh, please share what kind of things you were looking at um, when researching this file format. But if there are no more questions, um, we will move on. Um, so, because um, we, we don't have uh, time to do another file format, uh, sadly, however, um, in the Google Drive that we shared with everyone, um, you all should have access to, there's another file format, and if you wanted to do in your own time, have um, file, look at those um, samples and put them through hex editor and see if you can um, distinguish what the signature might be. Um, in this next example, we we're going to look at um, sort of signature options. So I mentioned uh, previously that um, with Francesca that we were, we we said that some uh, file formats don't have uh, magic bytes. And in that case, we would be looking at um, what the structure of the file format is and uniquely identified with the structure of file format. And in that case, we would um, we would use this table to look at what uh, the what sort of like give more flexibility to our signature. So um, specifically we would use uh, this sort of, um, so for example, the curly brackets um, would specify how many bytes we are not looking for. So a signature could be written as, um, I'll put an example in the chat. So it could be um, 4D, then you can have a curly bracket and in there you could have one. Um, and then in there could be FF. Um, and basically the, what the one in the bracket means that this is not the byte that is part of the signature. This is, we are skipping one byte. But you could also have something like put one to 20 in there. And that would mean um, we are not looking for those 20 bytes. We are skipping those bytes. So um, if, um, yeah, I hope that's, that's makes, that makes it clear. Um, and uh, we will move on to next slides. And I will pass on to Francesca to talk about um, some more information that's included in the uh, Google Drive. Yep. Um, yes. So um, if I, I was actually going to cover some of the stuff that Andrea was just saying um, about the um, about just taking it to the next level with your signatures. So, for example, um, as she was saying earlier, um, adding a bit more flexibility. So um, there's a few different things we can do. For example, you may notice that the distinguishing pattern um, at the start of the file is actually sort of three or four bytes in. Um, and then we would add an offset to the file, which we'd call sort of an offset of three or four, um, which you'd then submit with your signature. Um, it can also, um, with this syntax, we can do sort of either or options or um, a sort of range of different bytes that it could be. Um, and then we also have our wild card, which is the little star. So um, you may find that there's a, signature range and then a star which means that the next range of bytes could be anywhere else in the file but connected um, so uh, we try and avoid using that because that will actually slow down the processing time of um, droid um, so if it's scanning through the entire file um, it will necessarily take longer than if it was um, looking for something within the first 60 bytes, for example. Um, but sometimes with big files, it's really necessary to have that star. Um, and 
yes, as Andrea is saying, um, I think we probably use the curly brackets um, most frequently um, uh, in order to sort of show like groups between bytes. Um, for example, we may be skipping out a version number or something like that within the curly bracket and then it will go on to the next line. Um, yep, that's everything from taking it to the next level. So I think as well, we um, have included uh, the, the sort of starter pack um, in the Google Drive as well. So that also um, gives you information on how to do Valformat research and some more, there are some more links included in that um, about how you uh, can do um, conduct file format research and more about what Francesca mentioned about the file format signatures if you wanted to have a look at that as well. And I will pass on to um, Andre to talk about the submissions and the submissions we look for in Pronom. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned before, we um, rely on um, submitters and external stakeholders that we work with from all around the world. Um, some of them work very closely with us. Um, and um, But anyone can make a contribution. Um, we particularly are interested if, if, any, if anyone has any interesting collections with file formats that we typically don't see, the information that isn't um, available in Pronom, or even if those files are not in your collections, but you um, somehow come across them or you find any gaps in um, the database that we have, then um, we would absolutely love to hear from you. And um, there are also quite a few file formats that we have where um, a description for them historically has not been added. So um, I believe that there's, there's a list um, out there somewhere. I'm not sure if it's in the links, uh, but we can definitely provide it where, um, it would be really useful for um, to have a community contribution where someone comes in and uh, provides a description um, to benefit other people. Um, and I was actually just about to post a couple of links to the first file, two file formats that we covered. Um, so you can see how they appear on the Pronom um, websites. And um, there you'll have things like description, and then you'll be able to see the signatures as well that we talked about. Um, but any kind of contribution is um, hugely beneficial. Um, so we really encourage it. Um, and um, sorry, if we just to go back for just a moment, Andrea. Um, yeah, and and you know, particularly we've we've had a lot of contributions from from Europe, North America, but um, anyone further afield would be hugely welcome too. We're trying to uh, I think the goal is for us to pin every single continent. Um, I think there was some talk about getting a submission from Antarctica not so long ago. Um, so yeah, the hopefully that will come to fruition at some point soon. And the next slide. So if you did want to get in touch with us, then um, there is an online um, submission form um, and you can see the URL um, just there on the screen. Um, and um, you can um, provide your name or if you'd rather remain anonymous, then that's also a possibility. Um, and um, any kind of information about the format would be hugely useful, but I think we'll come to talking about the perfect submission. I'm not sure if it's the next slide or if it's just a little bit later on. Um, yeah, then, then um, also the other way of getting in touch um, uh, with us is um, the GitHub page that we have. So over here, you can also make a submission. And this is a really useful thing if you want to attach any sample files for us. Um, as I mentioned before, the more sample files we have, the more certain we can be about a particular signature. Um, so that's a great way of getting in touch with us too. Um, and we've kind of um, been utilizing this more and more over the last um, year and a half since we um, set it up. Um, and what would the dream file format submission look like? So ideally the information that we're looking for is um, the name of the file formats and any version, if it, that needs to be distinguished. Um, for instance, if we were to take Microsoft Word files, I think there's about six different versions alongside others that predate that. So something to distinguish uh, a new file format um, from the previous versions that are already on the database, that would be really useful. Um, a description, even if it's brief, yeah. Um, some information about the file um, would be um, really welcome as well. And it doesn't need to be um, elaborate, just a couple of sentences. Um, you know, uh, maybe about uh, when the file format sort of um, 
came to um, into existence and potentially when it got discontinued, maybe the company that it's associated with, um, what that file format is for. Um, so for instance, is it an image file? Is it an audio file? Is it a database? Um, anything like that would be uh, really useful. Um, if you're also able to provide a formal specification, if one can be found, as we've said, that's not always possible. Um, but that would be, um, that would kind of add credence to a particular signature um, that you might be submitting as well. Um, links to sites where we can get samples. Um, yeah, absolutely, that would be great. Um, or if not that, then samples from, um, from provided via email or via GitHub um, would be really welcome as well. It just means that we can test things quicker and um, put, the, put them into Pronom and you know, that can then get made available for Droid and Siegfried and all the other file format identification tools. Um, and then finally, at least last but not least, everything we've been looking at today, which is the signatures themselves. Um, so um, something like the a sequence of hexadecimal pairs that we've seen, um, if they have um, an ASCII equivalent, a natural language equivalent, like you know, dynamic publisher screen that we saw in the first example, um, uh, that information about the signature really is key if we want to um, identify that um, that file format. Um, and it's also just worth noting as well, um, if you can't share samples with us, uh, you are also able to just uh, share the hex editor and uh, sort of like a picture of a screenshot of what the signature, what you think the signature is um, and what it looks like. So hopefully following us on this workshop, you got uh, gain some knowledge of how to do that and uh, if you aren't able to share samples because of some privacy issues or um, the samples might be too large to send uh, then that is also a good way to tell us about uh, how what the file format might be and what the signature sh uh, should look like in pronom um, and um, we also have a pronom drop-ins so if you want to get in touch with us that way, um, we got we run at pronom drop-ins every two weeks at uh, four pm UK time, or we also have alternatively at seven am UK time for um, anyone from uh, sort of uh, uh, Australia, and um, the time in there would be seven am UK time. I'm not. Uh, sorry, yeah, so it would be 7 a.m. UK time, I'm not sure exactly what, I think, yeah, sorry, it says 4 p.m. Uh, Australian time, but um, since we've recently changed times, uh, this information might not be 100% correct, so apologize for that, um, but yeah, we've got two sort of times that we run this workshop at. Um, so we have finished uh, looking at all the file formats, and we now have got um, a quiz. So. Um, in this, so here we will be using the Menti again, and you can log into the um, to your Menti quiz again and put in this code. And with this code, you there are some questions that will be will go through together. Um, I can see there are some questions in the chat. So um, yeah, I'll 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 take I'll take the first one from Hillary again. Another excellent question. Um, so um, offsets, minimum and maximum offsets. So what they relate to is if um, you were to open up um, HXD or another hex editor, um, offset is something that's mentioned um, in the top left-hand side of the screen. So um, all that it is, is the with some file formats, um, the signature will be consistently in exactly the same place, either at the beginning or at the end of the file, in which case the maximum and the minimum offsets would be zero and zero if you are only expecting it to be right at the very beginning of that bit stream and you are not expecting any kind of variation so in reference to the gift specification um that you posted the link to so you'll notice that um there's it's a two-part signature as we've explained absolute from beginning of file or just beginning of file and absolute from end of file so um for the beginning of file we've got the offset set as zero so we are expecting that, I think from memory, it's um, GIF 89A um, to come right at the very beginning of that bit stream. But if we look at the absolute from end of file, um, we'll see that it's um, offset zero and maximum at offset four. And I'm just gonna post that in the chat. Um, although actually, 
Uh, Andre, if, um, if you're, I'm not sure who's sharing the presentation, but if we could follow that link, that could be really useful. Yes. Uh, but it's, um, uh, it, you'll notice that for the end of file part of the signature, the offset or minimum offset is zero, but the maximum offset is four. So what that is saying is um, that uh, 3B um, character, I'm not sure if it's got an ASCII equivalent, but we've, we saw that 3B earlier in HXT, that can appear either, either at the very end of um, the file or the bit stream, or it can occur four places from the end, four, four spaces from the end. So it can be right at the very end or in any gap between um, the end of the bit stream and four pairs of hex along. Um, and that's just to, um, that's just the way that the specification sets it out. Um, and um, that's the variation that we might expect to see in those files. So um, offsets um, by default, um, it would, the, the signature or for the most simple signatures, it's always zero, zero. Um, but um, sometimes it can be much bigger and that can be even bigger when it comes to text documents. So things like XML um, or things that are human editable, sometimes that has to be expanded quite a bit. So I think um, within those, you might see uh, from zero to um, 1024 bytes and things like that. So um, yeah, there can be there can be some variation with that. Um, and um, yeah, Francesca, very like helpfully has also posted some information about that there too and a question from Lara as well um problem with identifying mp4 files um but it's not being identified by droid um that is something that's that sometimes does happen so mp4 is a is a what's known as a sort of a container format so it can contain various bit streams um various audio and various video that's essentially just wrapped up in this in this file format so um uh, if you could send us some more information about this, um, that would be really useful. Or um, even if, or even better, if you were it's able to find some time um, to drop into our open drop-ins that um, Andrea has mentioned, and then that would be great too. Or if you were to do that ahead of time, um, and uh, then you know we can come to discuss it and we can maybe uh, try to figure out um, what the issue is and why uh, Droid might not be picking those files up. Um, but yeah, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yes, Francesca, um, just uh, send in the chat as well. Um, yeah, please get in touch with us uh, with our email and to send us uh, whatever information you have on that file format, and we'll be more than happy to look at a look at it. And maybe if there is a way of updating a pronoun signature to MP4, uh, but as Andre mentioned, they can be quite complex. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if everyone had a chance to um, access the um, presentation. Uh, so in there, we should have questions and we can look at the quiz together. I will just go ahead. Sorry? I will just go ahead and post the links for the Mentimeter once again over here. Thank you. Thank you for that, Andre. Um, so yeah, in the first question, uh, seems like majority of people have voted, uh, have correctly found that the magic bytes have a magic powers is the lie. Um, well, we like to believe that they do have magic bytes uh, because they tell us what exactly the file format is, but um, fortunately that's not factually correct. Um, but the other two uh, in piece of information are correct where the hex values come in pairs and file format uh, signatures are written in hex. Um, so we can go to our next question. Um, so if everyone would like to put their answers in now. Should we just hide this just to stop the um, screen? Ooh, yes, that's just good for a idea. moment. <laughs> And we'll just give it one. I think it might have to, I might have to share my screen instead. Ooh. Yeah, I think you'll have to reshare your yeah. screen. There we go. And I think we had a few more questions, but I think we are just um, running quickly out of time. So we might just do um, this question as um, a last one. And then 
um, we will um, move on. So hopefully everyone had a chance to put in their answers. Yeah, so, um, so correctly, we identified that um, changing the file format extension changes the file format type. That is not correct. So uh, the other two information, file format extensions are not the most secure way of uh, format identification. That's correct. Uh, as Andrew explained at the beginning, you can easily change the file format extension, but it won't change the file format, the, the file format itself. And um, so that's why we use signatures to identify a file file formats. Um, yeah, so uh, think, well done to those who voted and thank you for your participation. Uh, we will now go back to sharing our presentation. So we've completed the quiz now and we've just got like a lot, very last uh, Menti slide for you as well. Oh, sorry, I realize I'm not actually sharing my screen. So there you go. So that is um, another exercise we've got in our mentee. Um, if you could please uh, share any feedback you have um, by using the sliders, um, so up and down sliders, that would be great. Um, and uh, also whilst you're doing that, if there are any questions or anything we've covered today, if anything is unclear, or if you just wanna ask us anything, uh, please, tell us in the chat or unmute yourself. Okay, um, if there are no questions, we will uh, move on. So well done. Uh, you have now uh, completed all the fun that was planned for today. Um, and hopefully you have, um, you now feel like you are a good file for my detective and you can detect those signatures um, on your own. Uh, but as I said, uh, we are here if you want to chat about file formats, if you have got any more questions, um, you can uh, email us in the in our Perino mailbox, as uh, Francesca posted um, in the chat. You can go onto our website, explore some file formats, look at, uh, type in any extensions you know, and look at what uh, signatures there are. Uh, we also have our GitHub page, and we, as we mentioned, we run in our drop-in session. So please, please come along to those and we can talk about file formats. Um, so yeah, please tell us any questions or anything you may have, uh, but thank you again for the participations and thank you for coming along. And I hope you had, much, had fun. Uh, we had a lot of fun preparing the materials for you. So I hope you enjoyed yourself. Oh, well, thank you everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you for the excellent contributions and questions and um, for your attention. We're conscious it's a, it's a bit of a long session. So thank you for staying with us. And absolutely, we would love to um, to receive contributions um, from from everyone, um, so please do get in touch via any of those methods that Andrea and Francesca have mentioned.